So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. And um, actually, as you can see in the background, we are going to discuss something else than in the last episode because I actually realized, or yeah, pretty much recognized that I that I actually said that we uh, or I am actually going to discuss um, two books at a time because it's yeah, it's just better and it's a little bit more uh, yeah. Uh, and more change and so on and therefore I will just do that. I can actually see the microphone. I'm using Megaphone as uh, as an app to, to record this because I'm actually recording everything with my phone which works pretty fucking good. So if you do not have any money to spend for a microphone, just, yeah, just use your phone and in general I would say you just should use what you have right now. I'm um, I'm in a pretty good position because I do have a MacBook uh, because of school and so on, which is definitely a help for me to um, really create these things that I'm just doing right now, especially in terms of the posts and um, yeah, everything is going quite smoothly and quite good and everything, yeah, it's a pretty powerful thing. So therefore, uh, in terms of this, there's nothing to complain about. Uh, as you can see, we are going to dis- to to discuss um, To Sell is Human by Daniel H. Pink, um, which was a book, and actually on the SamuelThomasDavis.com website, uh, where I haven't been for a long time, for a pretty long time, uh, my fucking PC is cranking up its fans right now. The question is why? I don't know. I hope everything is okay. Um, by Daniel H. Pink. Um, I am actually on the SamuelThomasDavis.com website, as I said. Um, because I was like, okay, maybe I'll find there something, and um, because the interface of the paulminus.com website isn't as good in terms of searching new books, because it takes a little longer as on this website and as as on the powermoves.com website, and therefore I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to to go to this website and see if there is something, and I actually found this book. I haven't been discussing it, uh, which was definitely something that's a little bit surprising because I've. I felt like, okay, I have been going through every single book there is on this website, but I'm not. And that's pretty happy. And I just look it up on Amazon if it is a good book or it's just, you know, looking at the rating because I think it's a pretty reliable and pretty um, trustworthy thing just to go on, on Amazon and look for the rating. And it has five stars, which is amazing. And it also seems to be pretty good in general, also in terms of the uh, uh, actual ratings and what people wrote and and so on and yeah and what all the authors and all the other personalities said so let's let's go straight in i think so the book in three sentences the first thing is we are all in sales and this is something and the actual funny thing is <laughs> that there was another customer who actually made a video for this certain book um in terms of actually saying okay this is a good book, um, I would recommend it to other people, this is something that uh, gave me some value, which is definitely a good thing if you're such a customer that is just, you know, providing those videos, and it, I think he actually does more than, or has done more of these videos, because he some kind of like just, you know, uh, introduced, you know, this kind of episode, as I would say, um, as well, which just, you know, leads me to the thought that he might be doing it more often than uh this one time but um, actually a good thing then you can just see okay uh, yeah if people just take the time for doing this this must be something uh, of value um, but we are all in sales uh, this is actually true you know something that Gary Vee again <laughs> like in the last episode is emphasizing a little bit more is that um, we are all selling each other so we are all our own PR agents the thing is Um, because of social media we are all doing it you know way more and you know way over the top as well and but the thing is we all do it by now so you know it's something like okay it's something like money actually a lot of people just say that money just pretty much reveals your 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 character you know you're just you know the person you are anyways but through money you can just and especially others can just see it way better and way more easily than um than without money and uh i think yeah it's the same thing with social media as well everybody is just selling selling his own personality and himself and um it's definitely true and that's definitely a thing 
just have to see <laughs> if everything in terms of the uh, recording is right. Actually, sit sit down a little bit more straight, I think. Is this a little bit better one? I think it's... You can actually see my design shirt. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, uh, on the second one is ambiverts are the most effective salespeople. I don't know what these people are. And third one is, it's easier to sell something to someone when you know doing so will improve their life and maybe even their world. That's definitely the truth. You know, I think to really be able to market a product, the product itself has to be good. So for good marketing, the base is just a good product. And I think it's way more easily to just be like, okay, this is a good product. I will, or I want to give it to the world because it will just, you know, transform a lot of lives. It will just help other people. It will give value to other people. It's way more easy to just, you know, sell this product or market it. The five big ideas of this book are, the first one is, like it or not, we are all in sales now, which is um, definitely just picking up the thought of, you know, the first uh, sentence of the free, the, the book in three sentences, which is, we are all in sales. And yeah, so therefore we are just all in sales right now. Uh, the second one is the ability to move others to change uh, what they have for what, what they have for what we have is crucial to our survival and our happiness. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, a third one is Adam Grant has discovered that the most effective salespeople are abiverts. Ambivert, sorry, those who fall somewhere in the middle of the introversion extraversion scale. Introversion extraversion. The fourth one is the most effective self talk doesn't merely shift emotions, it shifts, it shifts linguistic categories, it moves from making statements to making questions. Okay, so yeah, I get it. Um, this is something that where, where did I have, where have I read it? I think it was Simon Simon Sinek as well. I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, um, it's just like you should definitely just ask yourself more questions. And the thing is, am I doing this one right? Uh, is it the right thing to do? Could I do it better? Is there something I could do right now that will improve my... Life. Improving the life as I'm just improving the fucking episode just... <laughs> through letting a little bit more light in and it's so oh my fucking god it's so fucking beautiful outside after this after i've recorded this one i will just go straight outside for real yeah it's really beautiful i like it you know um when i'm just you know looking out of my window there is a yeah it's not a mountain but it's some kind of a, a bigger hill you know the the very uh, you know Everywhere, quite you know, everywhere where I'm looking throughout my window is just mountain and or just hills, which is always just a kind of beautiful thing, you know. Um, always in terms of winter, you know, when winter is just um, or it's the first day that uh, where it's snowing, it's always like wow, you know, the world can can be so beautiful. And every time, you know, quite in the summer, it's also like yeah, uh, very great, very very beautiful, very. Yeah, very nice. And I'm actually pretty looking forward for the summer. You know, I'm definitely a summer person. What about you? Are you more like, yeah, I like winter or do you more like summer? Pretty interested. Uh, the fourth one is, no, the fifth one actually is, anytime you're tempted to upsell someone else, stop what you're doing and observe instead. Don't try to increase what they can do for you. Elevate what you can do for them. Definitely. And never judge other people. This is also something, whether... Um, because of their style in terms of clothing, whether it's um, their culture or their their uh, uh, their ethics, or uh, where they came from, where their parents came from, whom they like, whom they love, if they're um, you know if they're loving uh, girls, loving boys, both. I don't care, you know, and you shouldn't care as well, you know. We all are individuals. We all are thinking on ourself, about ourselves, and we all just should, I don't know, shouldn't judge as much as we are doing. To sell is human, uh, the summary. Like it or not, we are all in sales right now. The ability to move others to exchange what they have for what we have is crucial to our survival and our happiness, which just means selling something. Because, you know, through selling, you just 
give somebody something for for an exchange of something else you know you give something a product and you get some money from them and i think and i'm just thinking now if this is or if this was actually the case all the time and i quite think like yeah quite quite always you know you yeah you know the, the thing is it's always like yeah you're giving maybe you're just giving somebody a present you know and in return you just get a smile or you're just you know being liked or all these things you know this this is also a possibility it doesn't have to be money or another product but it could also be feelings and just you know mimic and just you know as i said a smile or some some easy things like this or some just really simple or basic things uh, whether it's selling traditional form or it's non-sales variation we are all in sales now uh, falazzo or falazzo whatever uh, makes a distinction between irritation and agitation irritation he says is challenging someone to do something they want that that we want them to do okay by contrast agitation is challenging them to do something that they want to do yeah that's definitely a good thing you know just um and always this is something that i've learned uh through how to win friends and influence people if you're a leader and if you're a ceo or if you're just you know a superior to somebody else always say please you know please always say please because it makes everything a little bit nicer you know just don't tell them yeah get me a coffee or i don't know make this now and it, now it's time for doing this whatever um always say please you know this is one simple word that could just make so much you know just tell them okay could you please do this now um could you please i don't know you know, it's it's just one word, but I think this one word can change up so much, and and this is so important for me at least. Those who would receive, who would received even a small injection of power, became less likely and perhaps less able to attune themselves to someone else's point of view. Okay, interesting. Uh, the notion that extroverts are the finest salespeople is so obvious that we have overlooked one teensy flaw there's almost no evidence that it is actually true i don't even know what the whole paragraph the whole thing means <laughs> and i'm not joking the nation the notion the notion what's the notion the notion that extra extroverts is it extroverts extroverts are the finest salespeople is so obvious that we've overlooked one's teensley flaw i think it's actual extroverts i think this is actually the same thing in german like you know but the changed up thing is that it's an A instead of an O. Just thinking. You know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just, you know, what I mean. So people, they just like to, to go to other people and they are not like shy and they are not like, okay, I don't want to talk to people. I think they mean these people. And, you know, this definitely makes sense. You know, if you're just a person who likes to engage with other people, who likes to talk with other people, who likes to just be around with other people or be around other people, you definitely just are a better salesman than somebody who is just shy and somebody who is not willing to talk to to anybody. You know, this makes sense and this is, I think this is some kind of common sense or I'm just, yeah, never mind. <laughs> so the three key steps to strategic mim mimic mimicry, is it mimicry or mimic mimicry? Mimicry? I don't know. The first one is watch, observe what the other person is doing. This is definitely something, um, besides hearing and listening and, and these things, definitely something a lot of people don't do. Just watching and observing and listening. This is important. You know, how should you know um, what other people are thinking, what other people need in terms of marketing, in terms of your business, in terms of your target audience, if you're not observing, if you're not listening. You know, you can't just always be talking. Sometimes you just have to listen as well. The second one is wait. Once you have observed, don't spring immediately into action. Don't do this too many times though. Yeah, I would say, okay, this makes sense because if you just gathered some new information, which is fairly new actually, and um, yeah, even though you might be completely sure that this is you know, the truth and this is something you can work with, just overthink it once more and even wait a little bit. Um, but yeah, but but this is some kind of contradiction to what Bezos is always saying. He says that he would rather make a fast decision that's not that accurate, um, like 90% or 80% accurate, uh, because of being fast. You know, 
because being fast is just pretty important in nowadays, you know, uh, not society, but nowadays economic or economists economy economy <laughs> economy because yeah everything is so fast and therefore being fast is much better than being 100% precise um, which actually plays in hand with kind of perfectionism which is also um, something I definitely underline and point out quite often which is um, but pretty important for me because at my point of view perfectionism is just something that that's ah, not good because it just you know pretty much uh, restricts you from being as fast, as creative, as, as I don't know, there are certain things, yeah, but on the other side, being, you know, perfect, even though, you know, perfectionism is something that's, that's not existing even, you know, there is never a perfect thing, you know, this, um, the best example is, and you, you might know this, um, when I'm drawing something, and it, you know, takes me, and this is not something new, and not something that's unusual, and it takes me, I don't know, 20 hours, which is, um, you know, definitely something I done in school, you know, working on something for 20 hours. Um, or did I? Maybe, yeah, no, nah, mm, maybe 15. 15 is enough though. Um, you know, if you're working on these things at the end, you probably, and this is, you know, also something that my, my teachers always say to us is, or said to us, you know, nowadays we're not just, you know, uh, drawing that much anymore which is a little bit of pity because, uh, yeah, you just pretty much recognize that your um, ability to, to, to draw just good or to draw well is just a little declining, I think. You know, if you're just not practicing it um, all the time, you can definitely feel it with quite everything, I would say. But um, if you are just, you know, drawing something, the chances are that you might overdraw it, that you're thinking like, yeah, I could this and I could do that and I could, you know, p perfect or make this one perfect and that one perfect and shade it a little bit more, I don't know. Um, then at the end, sometimes your just end product might not be as good as some product that you had in the middle of the whole project because you're just overdoing it. And I think, um, yeah, this is quite the same thing, you know, this is, you know, the, the whole fault of or the whole uh, bad thing about being perfect that maybe at the end it's not even, it's it's not even perfect because, you know, just you overdone it. But yeah, the third thing is Wayne. After you have mimicked a little, try to be less conscious of what you're doing. This is definitely something that uh, I think I've, I've been talking about on or in an Instagram story actually <laughs> something I fairly do way too less because this is actually something a lot of people enjoy and I see a lot of people enjoying and uh, I'm not doing it because you know I'm, I'm not just thinking about it you know all the time when I'm in the train or just doing something else I primarily think about yeah I should be on the platform I should comment I should just like other posts I should be engaging um, and not like you know making making uh making Instagram stories or Snapchat stories, even though, um, you know, having Snapchat stories or Instagram stories is actually something that um, Gary Vee says is a completely different world than the uh, the normal feed of Instagram. Um, why? I don't know why, but it makes sense. You know, it's a whole other platform. The format is completely different. Um, it has something to do with time. You know, the post is not available for, you know, uh, for 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 any longer if it's you know if it expired and so on so there are certain things that are completely different to the main instagram and in terms of sales it should actually be working way better than uh, the normal feed which is um, yeah which could make sense because you you have the swipe gesture and you can put in more things you know because of the the, the space you get because of the format yeah attuning yourself to others uh, exciting your own perspective and entering theirs is essential to moving up, to moving others. Exciting your own perspective and entering theirs. Um, yeah, definitely. If you just are able to excite your own perspective for others, this definitely means that you just you know make somebody interested in what you're thinking about, even though, um, which which I think is just the same thing that they just uh, pointed out, but I just have to talk about this. <laughs> Um, if you're just talking about something, you know, something that might be good for you or might be just moving you, doesn't mean that it is also moving the other person you're talking with. Which means, on the other hand, that you just have to know what the other piece, uh, what the other person thinks 
uh, what his or her values are, what um, their goals are, and you know, all these certain things. And then you can be like, okay, um, make it a little bit more personally your approach in um, exciting your own perspective, which then means, okay, um, I know that this person likes football. So therefore, I will just, you know, put my whole perspective into a little sporty and football perspective. So therefore, the other person might be more interested and even more interested in what I'm saying or what I will say. Adam Grant has, has discovered that the most effective salespeople are ambiverts, those who fall somewhere in the middle of the introversion and extraversion scale. Okay, um, which makes sense because... I think even though just to just maybe correct the thought I had before and I'm, I was just thinking about if I actually uh, misread the first one is that um, extroverts may be too direct and maybe too um, in the face. Yeah, definitely a good one. Too, too in the face and too straight and too maybe even, um, yeah, some sort of um, annoying. Yeah, actually annoying because they are approaching you so fast and they are so... I just, you know, think about an extrovert as someone who is just, you know, quickly talking and who is just, you know, so quick and I don't know, you know what I mean, I hope. <laughs> just the same thing that I'm today right now. I don't know, I'm just today, I'm, I'm speaking so fast and so fluent, which is on the other side or on one side pretty good. On the other side, I just see that it makes the whole episode a little bit stressful. Sorry. Um, but yeah, is everything okay? Everything is okay. Everything is okay, even though I'll just go into to Chrome and see what's up. I, by the way, to just um, to just ask you something, are you interested or are you just, you know, looking forward into the future? So are you pretty like, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm pretty interested what the future is looking like, um, you know, and, you know, what will happen and, you know, what the technology will be in in this and, or, you know, that date and so on. And I've actually seen a few infographics. I've shown them in um, yesterday's episodes, one of them, I don't know. And it is actually pretty interesting what uh, some people assume or think will come in the next few years. So actually in 2019, which is we have 2019 now, I think, and there will actually be just, you know, eye and eye recognition in terms of, yeah, you can actually be uh, controlling some interfaces with your eyes and, um, you know, such futuristic stuff, which I think, and I'm just so fucking, you know, looking forward to, to me getting really old and just seeing, okay, uh, there are actually flying cars and we have underwater cities and, you know, all these, all these things. And yeah, and this is one of the way, one of the um, reasons why I think, yeah, I'm so fucking grateful that I'm so young and I'm in such a good position and such a good place and I um, do not have to be concerned about anything. You know, I have everything, everything. You know, I even don't need a million or ten million dollars. You know, I would just invest it into this or would invest into um, extra, I don't know, stocks would be even a good thing because I could feel like, okay, I, I have everything. I don't need something. What, what would I need? You know, I would do just the same shit as I'm doing right now. I would just sit there and record my episode, maybe with a little bit of better setup, with a little bit of better microphone and, and camera, but it would be the same thing. And besides the whole, the whole question or the whole thought, I wouldn't even like to get the money. You know, I, I want to work for it and I want to achieve it myself. I want to have a, a company that is just making this money for me. I just want to, you know, be the person who has worked and has achieved something in terms of, or uh, um, so that I just have the money. I'm not really like into, yeah, uh, playing Lotto and just, you know, winning the game, uh, winning the money and or just getting the money some, some like, you know, from my parents or something. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like, yeah, I want to work for this because... I think, especially, and this is some, some kind of another thought, a lot of companies who are just based on fundraising, at my point of view, and it's something that just makes sense for me, for, um, me maybe, um, that um, a lot of just companies that got fundraised do not have the ability to generate money on themselves, which then just means that they are not able to 
have oxygen. You know, it's money is the same thing for a human as money for a company is the same thing as oxygen for a human. If you have a company, you definitely just need money. And if you're not able to produce money on your own, and if there are sometimes, you know, in the future maybe, no people who are just, you know, giving you money and or just that you are not able to raise money anymore or any longer, this might be a fucking big problem. You know, if you can't just produce more produce, under quotation marks, um, Produce, produce you more money and this is I think the actual thing with fundraised companies they have a great idea yes totally but the thing is these people do often not have much um, not have don't have much education in terms of uh, leading a business making money often I say often not everybody definitely not there are definitely people who just you know had a startup or had a company and um, they had experiences before and therefore everything went well and so on and it, I think it always um, comes up to, to who has the idea and who is actually starting it. Because actually, you would be able to just, you know, um, pretty much hire a CEO for you. And just pay them something. And, you know, a CEO that has actually a lot of experience. A lot of just, you know, thoughts about your business. And a lot of, you know, good ideas. And so that you uh, don't have to be good at leading something and, and so on. And that he or she is doing it. Um, yeah, but I, I think I, <laughs> I totally, I totally fucking shifted from the, uh, <laughs> uh intentional, uh, not intentional, but initial thing I wanted to say. The initial thing I wanted to say is that extroverts or ex extroverts, 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 whatever they're called, um, that they are just, you know, maybe too direct and, and pretty much introvert is, you know, too, like, shy and, you know, doesn't approach any people. Therefore, something in between, a person that can be, uh, yeah, taking himself a little bit more back so that the, um, you know, that is not too much energy, that the um, atmosphere is a little bit more calm, a little bit more, um, like, uh, not silent, but a little bit more more beautiful, like I'm doing right now. You know, I, the whole episode I was just shouting, not shouting, but I was so energetic, and I'm just taking back a little bit because I just see, okay, it's too much. And yeah, I think this is it. I'm not just saying, yeah, I'm the best. Definitely not. But I just um, wanted to make an example somehow. <laughs> so um, how to stay afloat amid that ocean of rejection is the second essential quality in moving others. I call this quality bio buoyancy. It's B U O Y A N C Y. How to stay afloat amid that ocean of rejection is the second essential quality of moving others. Don't know what that means. And this is the good thing that I do have. I do not have a community yet, but there are some people who are just watching this. And therefore, if you totally know what this means, please just DM me, tell me, okay, this does mean this. And I will definitely say it in the next episode. Interrogation self-talk. The most effective self-talk doesn't merely shift emotions. It shifts linguistic categories. It moves from making statements to asking questions, which is something I've been talking about just before. Uh, on average, the self-questioning group solved nearly 50% more puzzles than the self-affirmation group. Okay. You know, are, are they just you know, asking themselves, is this the right one? I don't know. Hmm. People who, who, would, who would written, will I solve nearly... What the fuck? Solved nearly twice as many anagrams as they who would written I will or I. Will I? Ah, okay, I just get it now. Okay, this is even something I'm, I'm pretty interested in if it's even true because I've heard a lot often that you should actually be like, I can do this, I will make this, this will be my thing. Which makes sense for me because, yeah, you're definitely just, you know... Um, uh, relying on yourself, you're just believing in yourself, and this then makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, I think this is actually the end of the episode. 
Uh, the two episodes have been okay in terms of their length. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day or night, whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> and I hope you have a wonderful day again. Fuck. <laughs> um, I hope you're happy. Yeah, this is what I want to say. Uh, success, happiness, uh, wealth, health. I hope you're giving back something because that's important. And I hope you have a great legacy and, you know, you get remembered as someone who was just amazing to be around. And with that being said, I hope you live the greatest life you can live.